Now, the Democrats in this country are so freaked out, we elected a president who calls it the way he sees it and not the way the so-called mainstream media and political establishment on both sides of the aisle do, that they wake up hysterical every day, yelling, the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming, there's collusion everywhere, America is under attack, our way of life is coming to an end, and chicken little in the sky are falling. I'm even convinced they see dead people, too. You see, that is how we got to America. The Russians have landed. This whole dang island's under attack by Russia. The Russians have captured the airport. It's all over. It's, it's all over. We haven't got a chance. Not a chance. Fire until you see the light. Get out of the way. It's this grill. Those crazy Americans. All we wanted was both to pull our submarine off the reef and go home. This hysteria has nothing to do with Russia and everything to do with Donald Trump. Their hatred, their intolerance, their venom for him. And if it doesn't stop, the Democrats and the Democrats alone will be responsible for the demise of a workable and effective government of the people. We simply cannot go four more years with Russia, Russia, Russia. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And good old Nancy Pelosi right there in the Nancy Pelosi right there in the thick of it. After these latest revelations, it's becoming clear we have suffered a desecration of our democracy not seen since Watergate. A desecration of our democracy. Say what? So Donald Trump Jr., a political neophyte, gets an email from a friend saying he has information that would incriminate Hillary and her dealings with Russia that would be useful to his then-candidate father running for president. He has the meeting less than 20 minutes, and the discussion ends up on rescinding the ban on Russian adoptions. Nothing beneficial to the campaign comes out. But now, the hue and cry indict him for treason, for collusion, for campaign finance violations. Now, I got news for you. There is no law that says a campaign cannot accept information from a foreign government. If that were the case, everyone on a campaign who talks to a foreign national is committing a crime. And for you geniuses out there, there can be no treason since we're not at war with Russia. And by the way, the DNC and Hillary colluded with the Ukrainians to get information on Trump at the same time. And real covert operatives who understand meddling in other countries' elections say this is not how Russia would meddle in the election. That's not how it's done. Let's be clear. The Russians are masters at this kind of thing. They know exactly what they're doing. And no, it would be done in the dead of night, and you wouldn't see any evidence of it. It would not happen in the middle of a Senate office building in broad daylight. So now Donald Jr. is at fault for agreeing to meet someone to get opposition research. Now, as someone who's run for office five times, if the devil called me and said he wanted to set up a meeting to give me opposition research on my opponent, I'd be on the first trolley to hell to get it. And any politician who tells you otherwise is a bald-faced liar. So why the frenzy? Right after Hillary lost the election, Barack Obama imposes sanctions on Russia for hacking the DNC. Now. We all knew that Obama knew all along what Russia was up to, but he did nothing because he and the idiot pollsters predicted Hillary would win. So he felt no need to jeopardize his great relationship with Russia. That's what I said, Obama's great relationship with Russia. It was Obama in 2009 who gave the reset button to make nice with Russia. And when it came out, he knew about the hacking and a possible impact on the election. He says he told Putin to cut it out. Now, I personally don't even think he said that. 
So, the Russians hacked the DNC emails exposing two-faced Hillary and her lies, Donna Brazil giving Hillary questions for the debate, Debbie Wasserman Schultz knocking out Sanders to clear the playing field for her girlfriend Hillary, and Barack does nothing. Why? For your information, meddling in another country's election is not new to the United States. Barack Obama's State Department gave $300,000 to a not-for-profit in Israel to defeat Netanyahu. And for all you snowflakes out there, the U.S. has been meddling in other elections in other countries for decades. We staged a coup in Guatemala. Uh, a number of decades ago where we overthrew the government of Guatemala. We replaced the elected government of Iran with the Shah in 1953. Uh, we have done this and literally deposed leaders and replaced them with people who would do what we wanted them to. And it was Barack Obama who ended the missile defense shield plan for Poland and the Czech Republic. When he reneged, the Russians cheered, calling him brave, thanking him for the gift he gave Russia. And let me ask the Democrats out there, what did Barack Obama mean when he said this? After my election, I have more flexibility. You remember that hot mic moment? What message was Obama sending to Vladimir that he didn't want us, the American people, to know about? What was he willing to do for Putin that was so dangerous that it could have risked his losing the election? You tell me. And consider this. After drawing a red line in the sand, should Assad use chemical weapons on his people in Syria, Obama wimps out like a wuss and he does nothing. Think that one through. Obama then puts Putin in charge of overseeing the elimination of chemical weapons just used against the people in Syria. It tells you Putin puts pressure on Obama to let him, Putin, handle the situation for his friend and ally, Assad. And we put the fox in charge of the hen house and clearly failed since chemical weapon elimination deadlines were missed repeatedly. So, folks, it's Barack Obama who's pals with Putin. He watched like a wuss as Russia invaded and annexed Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula in 2014. And just to bring you up to date, it was his Department of Justice that let in the Russian lawyer Veselnitskaya without a visa and let her in under extraordinary circumstances, allowing her to then sit in the front row of a congressional hearing. And it was under Barack Obama that 20% of our uranium was sold to Putin with a $145 million kickback to the Clinton Foundation, that organized criminal enterprise that was a money laundering operation, and a $500,000 speech fee paid to Bill Clinton by a Kremlin-connected company. So I, for one, am sick and tired of Russia, Russia, Russia. Put up or shut up. And a message to those Republicans in Congress. You did nothing when the Democrats assaulted our democracy with fast and furious, the sales of weapons to the Mexican cartels, the Clinton Foundation, the sale of our uranium to Russia, Susan Rice lying about Benghazi. I want Loretta Lynch, Susan Rice, Hillary Clinton, and the rest of that gang under oath. So why don't you Republicans start supporting President Trump, face down this Russian nonsense, and start working for us, the American people? That includes health care. Otherwise, you're no better to us than the Democrats. And that's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook, Twitter, page, or Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine.